Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Richard and Alice. This is a game that uh, some of you might actually be familiar with because it uh, made it through the Greenlight program which means that effectively it's on Steam now but it's been available for a year and a half, a couple of years now. I didn't play it originally though uh, so this is my first actual interaction with it. It's uh, $3 for its opening week sale on Steam which is crazy cheap, $6 after that and it's uh, kind of a point and click adventure game, narrative puzzle game. You can consider this kind of thematically similar to stuff like Telltale's The Walking Dead uh, and kind of in a gameplay sense a little similar to stuff like To the Moon for example. Those are good comparisons and I, I really think Richard and Alice is a great game as well. I played it through in one sitting, lasted about two hours so you can get a kind of feel for, you know, value for your money if you're one of those people that actually uh, is concerned about stuff like that and I know a lot of you are uh, and I never do that. I, I probably do that three or four times a year play through a game, uh, even a short game in one sitting, so relatively heady praise. I think it's well worth the $3 asking price for its opening week sale, but I will mention, full disclosure, the, this game is made by uh, Owl Cave, a studio named Owl Cave. Uh, I'm not familiar with the designer slash programmer, but uh, I talk with the writer Ashton Rays on uh, Twitter all the time, and they were a writer on Starbound as well, so I do have a bit of a personal relationship with the writer of the game. If that puts my credibility into question, I encourage you to look at other reviews elsewhere, like the Steam reviews, which are also overwhelmingly positive. So, um, we're going to start a new game of Richard and Alice, and what this is, is um, a game where pretty much you only need your mouse to continue, or to, to do things. It's a pretty light puzzle game, for the most part. Um, if you've ever played a point-and-click adventure game, you're not going to be out of your element. Another game that this is a little bit similar to, uh, with respect to its storytelling and the atmosphere that it takes place in, is uh, the, the Wad Yid Eye game uh, Resonance, a point-and-click adventure game that kind of takes place after this apocalypse. And it's told through, you know, flash-forwards and flashbacks, so it's not a, a linear story, uh, which means you're piecing the puzzle together for yourself. Now, of course... Uh, this is the kind of game that I hate to cover in videos like this, because inevitably I end up having to read all of the dialogue, and I feel like a damn fool. But in any case, this is a flashback. You know, we're in, um, I don't know, present day UK, perhaps. It's snowing again? Oh man. What's wrong with that, son? That is a, a good old-fashioned American dad football coach face there. The last lot's barely melted yet. I'm fed up with the snow. I, I kind of want to put on a Cockney accent, but I think that would do the game a disservice. Every time it's the same. It's cold, it's wet, and everything comes to a standstill. Sounds like your mother. It just makes me feel miserable, Mad. <laughs> it makes me feel miserable, Dad. Sounds like your mother, son. Rich, listen to me. Remember what I always used to say. Aw, oh, Dad, not now. All right, but you know. What's really the problem, son? You used to love the snow. I was a kid back then. I guess I've just grown up. It doesn't feel magical anymore. Psh, what nonsense. It still feels magical to me, and I'm twice your age. Three times, Dad. Maybe even four. Um, we'll skip through a little bit of the dialogue, but basically this sets the stage uh, for kind of a great reveal, which is um, that, you know, there is kind of an apocalypse that is happening here. Even though it's snowing, and we consider snow to be kind of like this relatively minor inconvenience, unless you're driving, I guess, in which case it can actually be genuinely very dangerous. Um, this is the apocalypse, essentially. It just never stops snowing. So instead of being a zombie apocalypse or, you know, people are not having babies anymore, this time it just never stops snowing. Meteorologically impossible, perhaps, but it's, it, you know, the, the how and why of the apocalypse is not necessarily that important. What's important is the way that it makes other people act. And, you know, this is a game that will very much make you question the, you know, inherent good or evil of humanity much in the same way. Again, it's not a superficial similarity in a game like, or a way that a game like uh, Telltale's The Walking Dead, at least season one did. I haven't played enough of season two to levy that comparison. But anyway, deep in the rainforest of Honduras lives this fascinating creature. Look at that beautiful sloth. It is a brown-throated sloth, the most widespread and common of the three-toed sloths in the area. The sloth sleeps for an incredible 18 hours per day and is active in only few second bursts. Sounds like your mother... Okay, I'm going to retire that. It's not active at all anymore. Although they can walk along the ground and even swim, they try to spend most of their lives on the high branches of trees, descending once every eight days or so to defecate in the soil. So, to set the stage for what we've got going on here, this is one of the, uh, you know, eponymous protagonists of the game, Richard. Richard lives in this prison. We don't fully know why he's in the prison, at least to start with, uh, but the game's divided into nine or so chapters, maybe ten chapters, each one being maybe ten to fifteen minutes long, depending, uh, some of them are a little bit longer, depending on how long the puzzles take you to solve, and gradually we'll learn a little bit more about uh, both of the main characters and how they kind of found themselves in these positions, and it reveals the story in a very intriguing way. It is kind of difficult to show off in video, so in a sense I'm kind of asking you to take my word for it. Um, it's a very different world on the outside now. Oh well, we're not here to be entertained. 
Adult animals are solitary, expect when, except when raising young. They do not deal well with company. Males have been observed to fight one another using their four claws. And we've seen that another person has actually been uh, included here. Was that someone in the cell opposite? It's been empty for well as long as I've been here. I will admit, I like the environmental design of the game, like the visual style of the game I think looks totally fine. It's got a little bit of like a game or an RPG maker feel to it, which some people are really violently opposed to, as I found out when I played Always Sometimes Monsters. Some people are okay with. The animation does look a little wonky from time to time, but the visual style is very much not the focus of the game. Uh, almost all of the game takes place in just a few environments, you know, like this prison, uh, a couple of places that we'll find a little bit later as well. As you might expect, this is our uh, second character here, Alice, and uh, we get the late reveal on the credits that you can look up on TV tropes, potentially. So we'll have a lot of dialogue between them here, and I am going to read it because the dialogue is important, and what we'll probably end up doing over the course of this video is maybe uh, covering the first couple of chapters, because I don't want to spoil too much, but I also want you to see some gameplay that is not simply characters talking back and forth to one another, because that might be incessantly boring. Um, even though the dialogue is pretty well written. What I would suggest maybe is if you're going to be bored by this, read a text review or something like that. It'll take five minutes and you'll get maybe more of a feel for the game without having to hear me drone on. As much as I would love to say, you know, hey, don't leave my video. Stick around, please, if you'd like to. But uh, keep in mind, this might not be the most valid form of criticism. Anyway, it's been a while since I've seen another face. How are you? I mean, not great, I assume, since you've just, you know, ended up in jail. I'm Richard anyway. Nice to meet you. Hello? Hi, Alice is a little bit, um, shy. Reserved might be a way to put it. Shy is not really the right way. A little bit hesitant. Closed off. I'm sorry I didn't mean to... I mean, I thought I'd say hello. I know I wanted some company when I first got here, but do you want to be left alone? No, that's okay. Well, like I say, I'm Richard and you are Alice. We, the player, already knew that. Alice, pleased to meet you. Alice. Richard can be a little bit condescending sometimes, a little patronizing. But it has been a long time since he's spoken to anyone. I'll let you get settled anyway. No, honestly, it's fine. Sorry, I guess I'm just a little bit flustered. So what did you want to talk about? Um, so we have some actual dialogue choices here. I'd say, you know, probably about 50% of the gameplay is this dialogue. Not this particular dialogue, but this style of dialogue. And the other 50% is basically point-and-click adventure style puzzles. So, do you want to know about me? I will go through his comprehensive biography. Well, I'm Richard. When I was in, oh, I was in the military. Actually, that's why I'm here. I broke some rules, shall we say. I mean, don't get me wrong. I stand by what I did. Those men were petrified. They were heading for certain death I couldn't bring myself to be. Well, anyway, you've been here for a while then. Organized warfare is a thing of the past. Yeah, you could say that. All the violence that the weather brought with it. More needless wars. These days it's just chaos, or so I hear. I just don't believe it needed to happen. Sure, no one dealt with the weather well. I understand that. And I understand that deaths were inevitable. But so much fighting? I don't know. So what are you in for? And she says murder, and this kind of sets the stage because we're like, ooh, how can this, you know, seemingly innocuous or nice uh, lady be in here for murder? And, the, you know, her story, Alice's story, is really the focus of the, the game. Um, and her, her story is very interesting and also will make you feel that, you know, as human beings, we are simply a husk of morality waiting to blow away in the wind. Um, one second. If I told you yes, would you be scared of me? Relax, there's two sets of bars between us. Put it this way, I've learned some things recently. Yeah, about moral relativity, I suppose you'd call it. Well, since the snow started, things have changed, right? Definitely, there's no denying that. They didn't predict it soon enough. No one was able to bring it under control. It took over, dominated our lives. It changed people, but only because people were forced to adapt. I'm waiting to see what she actually is saying. What I'm saying is, I used to think killing was wrong under all circumstances, but now... Now I'm not sure what I think anymore. What an interesting, morally relativistic character. I think being a parent has settled my views on that. Um, sorry, I just, yeah. Are you okay? Well, that was it, really. I don't know. I'd do anything to protect my daughter. Have you got kids? Little boy named Barney. That's a nice name. I bet you miss him. Yeah, I do. I wish there was dialogue that was actually skippable so we could get to the puzzles, but... You know, this is actually really important. Getting used to being away from your family is the hardest part. I keep a photo of mine by the bed, stare at it every night until I fall asleep. Can I see it? Sure. Okay. So now we actually get to the, the puzzles of the game. And again, the the odd chapters in the game, I think it's the odd chapters in the game at least, are um, 
set in a prison, and basically they involve puzzles that require the use of our cell. So in this one, we actually have to send a photo across to Alice. So we have a family photograph on our desk, and we'll be able to pick that up. And uh, that should be added to our inventory, which you can see right there. And it's very standard point-and-click adventure stuff. You, you know, click on things in your inventory to examine them. Who, when they told me I was going to prison, this photo was the one thing I knew I had to bring. Fortunately, they let you keep stuff like this. Um, we also have a computer here, which we can access. We'll get like a login stick. Yeah, there we go. And we can apply our login stick to the computer, thereby demonstrating that we can use objects from our inventory on other objects in the world. And, um, you know, interact with them as such. So there are some notifications. Alarm test next Tuesday. Attention all inmates, please note that there will be a test of the prison alarm systems this coming Tuesday. The alarm will sound for approximately one minute. Please do not attempt to leave your cell and do not submit a ticket to the guards unless the alarm sound continues. Um, I'm going to skip some of these for now. But basically what you want to do is have your computer around so you can submit tickets and this will get guards to actually come to you. So, you know, in case something goes terribly wrong, you can submit a ticket and be like, hey, we're really freezing or something like that and that'll help out. But anyway, I'll solve this puzzle quickly enough. We're going to get the spare sheet and the spare duvet cover from under the bed, and we're going to combine them. And this will make uh, tide bedding, and if we combine this... Okay, we're, we're not going to combine this, actually. We're just going to push the tide bedding out into the middle, and then um, in doing so, we'll actually spread this blanket along the ground, and then we can safely pass the photo across it. Admittedly... The game is guilty, if you want to consider it like a guilt innocence type thing. The game is guilty of some arbitrary puzzle design, which is fairly endemic to the point-and-click uh, adventure genre to begin with. You know, a lot of the puzzle solutions seem needlessly specific, if that makes sense. Or uh, even just completely, you never would have expected it. I did have to use a walkthrough for some of the stuff that I encountered in the game. Um, but in spite of that, it's still worth playing for the story, for sure. Your partner is beautiful, and your daughter is so adorable. That was taken a while ago, obviously. Things had started to get bad, but we were still together. We were happy, you know? Um, and I think I'm going to skip through a little bit of the dialogue now. And this will take us to uh, Alice's first story. And that's probably all we'll play over the course of the uh, episode. So we're going to skip through a little bit of the dialogue here. Basically, what she is saying is that um, she and Barney, her son, uh, they used to be kind of free in the wild. Not in the wild, but, you know, in the, in the wilderness, kind of. And, um, they, uh, had been captured and taken in by an old man who maybe had some dubious intentions. And it's implied that maybe he assaulted Alice, maybe sexually assaulted Alice, maybe raped Alice. Um, so, you know, kind of a 28 Days Later type thing going on here. Where he's providing safety in exchange for, perhaps, you know, power in one way or another. Dominance. Anyway. So, we have kind of like escape the room type stuff going on here, where we have to figure out how to get out of this room safely uh, with Barney as well. Barney is the cutest little kid in the world. With his copper hair. Anyway, um, we're going to let this continue onwards here. And there's not really that much dialogue here, it's more of a puzzle solving type thing. So, Barney, what are you doing? Singing. La la la, la la la, that sounds how I sing. Singing like, um, the boy with the thorn in his side by the Smiths or something like that. I can hear that, Barney, sweetheart. Can you give it a rest, please? And like your average five and a half year old, he will just, uh, continue doing what he's doing. Which is probably going to annoy the man upstairs. Not God, literally the man upstairs in this, you know, environment. Alright, so we shouted at him. That's always it, isn't it? You're always just bloody playing. Mummy, you said a bad word. I know, Barney. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Yes, sweetheart? Are you cross with me? The game is, you know, very British. Which is, is a nice little cultural exposure in a way. Oh no, sweetheart. It's just, it doesn't matter. Why do all these apocalypse happen uh, in England, you know? 28 Days Later, Richard and Alice. Maybe because the people who made those films in this game live there. That makes a lot of sense. You know, write what you know, I suppose. Alright, so the old man is coming down here, I think. Because we made some noise. Alright, what the hell is all that racket? It's nothing, sorry. Don't make me come in there, I will, you know. I know, it's alright, I promise. You need to learn to shut him up. Come on, he's just a kid. Hey, I'm five and a half. You, I mean, that's still a kid. I can still consider myself a kid. I'm 44 and a half. Haha, <laughs> isn't he adorable? I have half a mind to come in there anyway just to see his face. That doesn't sound sinister at all. No, no, honestly, we're fine. He was just playing, but he'll be quiet. We won't disturb you anymore. See to it that you don't. 
Okay, a little bit of crocodile hunter meets EastEnders there. Now we will encounter a puzzle. Did I make the bad man come? That was a sentence that was quite awkward for me to utter in real life. Oh, Barney, it's okay. It isn't your fault. Again, if you're going to play the game, get used to there being a staggering amount of dialogue. And I do recommend that you do play the game if you like To the Moon, uh, the the Wajidai games, or um, you know the tone in The Walking Dead. It really, like, it might not seem like it, but it really reminds me a lot tonally, atmospherically, from a mood perspective of um, of the Walking Dead games from Telltale. Anyway, we are going to give Barney a toy, and then we're going to start solving our other puzzles. So we have a box key here. We're going to apply this to the box, open the box, and then there should be a toy inside. We uh, They're just blocks, but Barney will, um, you know, be content with those to some extent, no matter what. All right. So now we'll do some exploration. And what we have to do here... I think actually we can talk to Barney consistently, and I hate to spoil this, but basically um, Barney is going to tell us that, um, you know, he sort of likes the bad man, but he knows that the bad man did some bad things, but the bad man also protects us, so it's like, would you rather be, you know, protected by this, this asshole who is maybe taking advantage of you, or, um, you know, escape into the snow where, you know, nature might uh, completely ruin your shit, pretty much. Um, but you'll be free of his tyranny, basically. So, we're going to talk about escaping here. And I think he will give us a clue, yeah, about how to actually get out. So, basically, Barney says, and I apologize for skipping through so much, but this will be 45 minutes long if we didn't. Um, he tells us that um, when the light is broken, the old man has to, like, cut the power, which actually allows us to escape from this door. Um, because the old man has to, like, reset the generator to get the lights working again. Anyway. So I believe, just to kind of expedite the process here, we can take like a colored block and we can insert it. Well, there we go. Into this hole in the wall. And in doing that, we'll block the people that the old man was using to spy on us. So now when he actually looks, um, he's just going to see darkness and assume that we're telling the truth when, when we say that, you know, the, the power's out. So this game, we're going to be really loud, if I remember correctly. I apologize. I Seriously, like I know I've been self-conscious about this, but it is kind of one of those games that is difficult to show off in video format and maybe is more suited for text because you can talk about the game without having to do all this pseudo-voice acting stuff. Anyway, I'm sorry. I know you hate being disturbed. It's just, well, has there been a power cut? The light's gone out. We can't see a thing. Well, the light's out. Honestly, we can't see it all. It's so dark. Barney's getting scared. Can't you see? Come on, I know you've got some way of watching us in here. Can't this wait? We can't see five inches in front of our faces, please. Barney's getting really scared. Oh, for Fig Newtons. Right, I guess I'll go reset the power then. Thank you so much. And then, um... We're going to escape, and that'll be the end of Chapter 2. So the power's gonna go out in a second, and they're gonna open the door and, and bolt it. And that's gonna be the end of the chapter two, as mentioned. Um, again, it's a super weird game to kind of show off, um, but you spend the whole game pretty much with Richard, Alice, and Barney. You learn a lot about the characters, and you get really emotionally invested in them, uh, in spite of the fact that, you know, you probably aren't right now, considering the fact that I skipped 90% of their dialogue. So you're just going to kind of have to take my word at face value, I think. Um, Richard and Alice is a really good game. For three bucks, uh, a really good value for those of you who like playing uh, adventure games. And the story is really the focus, the, the way that the story unravels. Sometimes the puzzle design did make me a little bit aggravated, but um, there are some cool puzzles in the game as well. But, the, you know, the way that the story unravels and the way you piece it together, you know, one of the characters having a piece of information, the other character doesn't have, and vice versa, but the player has both of them, and you're drawing these conclusions for yourself. It's really good. does a good job of kind of... You know, evoking the kind of shit that could happen if, uh, you know, the world was under an apocalyptic era. Um, and, you know, watching morality slowly unravel in previously people that thought they were good or people that thought they were previously good. Anyway, long story short, I really like Richard and Alice. I hope that this video did at least a half-decent job of explaining why. Uh, check it out on Steam if you're interested. Again, 50% off for its opening week sale at 3 bucks, 6 bucks. Uh, after that, if you're watching this at a later date, but, uh, if you enjoyed it, go check it out. Also, if you enjoyed the video, click the like button, helps out a great deal, and of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.